Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be working on the Mela Earth Premium Series and this one is going to be of the Peacock. And as you can see on the package, this is going to be a colored sheet metal model and the sheet itself is actually has a metallic color finish on it. So the end product will actually be a colored Peacock. Inside the model includes the instruction manual, three and a half sheets of metal, and then a tape, which is a double-sided tape from 3M that you are actually going to be using to uh, attach to the bottom of the base of the stand so that you can actually have it be freestanding. So this model looks very intense, where if you look at the package, it looks like just a lot of feathers and it's actually going to be a lot of parts. But if you look at these sheet metals, you can see that actually the peacock uh, tail feathers are actually just strips of sheets where um, you're just adding one layer at a time. And it's actually not that bad. But for the most part, the whole assembly is pretty simple compared to um, what the final product looks like. So I, I know and it might be discouraging to look at this model and be like, oh, I can't do this. But surprisingly, this is actually a lot easier than, the, say, the Iron Man model, which includes a lot of small parts. Um, there are some individual feathers you're going to be putting together uh, for parts of it, but it's only in certain areas and it's to give a little bit more depth of detail. But for the most part, you're going to be working with big pieces of sheets, so it's actually easy to work with. I'm using a round tip plier to give the curve a uniform curvature um, instead of using my fingers. And then um, one mistake I actually made on this head was to close both sides. But um, that's actually what the manual tells you to do. But you're going to see in here that the, the head piece that you're going to be attaching onto the head, you have to reach in actually uh, twist it. So I actually had to open it back up to be able to reach in with the pliers that I have and the tweezer actually in this case just to be able to twist it back on and then I would close the head off. So one thing that I would actually suggest for you when you're working on this is actually not to follow the manual and close both sides of the head, but to leave one side open. This is where the round tip plier really comes in handy because you can actually wrap the leg around the round tip plier as you're bending it to kind of give the nice cone shape that's going to be the leg. And then we're going to be attaching it to the body. And the one thing about this uh, peacock that I thought was challenging was actually not the feathers or the, the tail itself, but actually the body shape because it's going to be consistent of multiple strips for the body that you're going to be curving. And there was really not a good clue on how much to bend it or exactly where to bend that it's kind of a guesswork that I actually started off with bigger curvatures. And then once I kind of got the, the three tips attached to the body itself um, that's when I actually started shaping it little by little and so you're going to see me kind of going back and forth between uh, shaping it and then kind of attaching the body and then shaping it again and so this is you know going to take a lot of patience just to work around the body area you don't have to get the perfect curvature on from the beginning I would actually suggest to just start wider and then start working it in as you start getting more and more uh, sheets of the body um, attached and then once you get the neck portion or actually the upper back and neck portion connected together then you're going to start seeing the shape take place and then you can kind of form the rest of the body. The instructional manual actually shows the edge of the body um, actually being all lined up but I wasn't too worried about this because you're going to actually be putting a back plate on for the back and then also the fetter that's going to be going on top of it that you're not going to really see too much of that edge to begin with so I wouldn't worry too much about making sure it's a perfect alignment. There is a tricky part where once you're complete with the neck itself you're going to be attaching the head onto the neck and you're going to find out that it's actually pretty small fit that um, I actually ended up instead of having a round neck I made it I squeezed the sides of it to make it more of an oval shape just to be able to get in between the two heads and then once I got the head in it I would actually kind of uh, push it on the top and bottom to kind of squeeze it back out into a round shape and by doing that the sides actually will push out and so the tabs will actually uh, go through and be inserted through the side of the head. And then once you have the head in you're going to be bending the tab and then kind of crimping it together to make sure that the head stays in place. 
As I mentioned before, I actually really enjoyed building this peacock model. As, as I mentioned earlier, the finish of the metal itself looks more like a kind of a painted metal uh, with a metallic finish on it instead of some of the other uh, Metal Earth series where it looks like there's a paint layer on top of the metal itself where it's kind of matted and looks like an actual just full on layer of paint while this one was actually integrated more to the metallic uh, sheet itself. As we're making the base, um, I can't help but admire the detail of the base stand itself because there are all these uh, intricate ornamental uh, details on it, on the sheet itself and it all has to do with the paint and the engraving that they've done on this base and I, I really think that this was a great design of the model just because of the amount of detail and just the intricacy of the model itself. So when I worked on this model, I thought that I wouldn't need that double-sided tape just because I wanted to be able to move that peacock stand around if I needed to um, when I'm actually you know, decorating my house with these metal earth objects. But the problem with the stand itself is that it's very, very uh, thin for the stand itself and then the peacock is pretty heavy especially with the, the weight of the tail going down and touching the ground um, that the double sided tape is actually very very important for your peacock to stand uh, without it you're gonna have to uh, kind of uh, balance the peacock in a certain way to make sure that it doesn't you know fall down but when you do it doesn't really look like it's standing up straight that um, it, don't ever throw away that double sided tape and unfortunately it's kind of going to be in a permanent position so you know make sure that you decide where you want to place this peacock before you start gluing it down so the wings that are going to be attached to the sides of the peacock um, is actually the most uh, detailed and most intricate part of this build where you have the individual feathers that you're going to be joining together and so what i ended up doing was doing more of an assembly line where i would do one row of feathers all at once and bend them to the uh, shape that it needs to be first and then um, one by one attaching them and then crimping them down and until I got that one kind of roll of feathers and then I'll attach it to the frame of the wing and then I'll repeat this process again and again until I got all the feathers in place. And then as you can see here, we're going to be attaching the wing to the wing frame and we're going to be repeating this process a few times and um, I think it's worth the effort just because it is the only area that actually has a lot of detail um, that I think it adds enough complexity to the model for the whole model itself to look very complex but it doesn't actually mean that the build itself is actually complex it's just these few details in these certain areas where you spend these time and effort uh, to make the whole overall model look great. So it's actually just two rows of feathers that you'll be completing and then the next uh, row of feathers will actually just be directly attached to the frames one by one and so this is really the hardest part here um, just being you know having the patience to uh, finish this one side of the wing and then we'll be doing the same exact process for the opposite side. Once the wing is done, we are actually going to be bending it to kind of give it a curvature to wrap around the body, but also kind of fluff up the feathers by creating a gap between each layer of the feather itself. And you can do this using the round tip pliers to bend the body itself, but then I kind of use my fingertips to kind of curl the ends of the feathers just to make them kind of have a little flare. Now we're attaching the body to the stand itself, 
and as you can see it kind of is pretty long that um, it kind of went off camera so um, it will be kind of awkward for a while to be building this peacock when you're attaching the feathers and stuff just because um, I had to kind of work with the, the stand kind of you know uh, hang dangling around from the feet and it kind of felt like it might break off but there really is no choice I may suggest you know maybe next if you're working on this model to attach the body to the frame after you've attached all the uh, feathers itself just because I kind of was very nervous uh, moving this peacock around all these different angles to kind of work the feathers in um, so you know the stand luckily didn't break but it did feel a little bit wobbly afterwards so the tail itself actually is very quick and this is like the biggest part of the model and um, it's really simple because all you're doing is just getting each strip and then attaching it to each other by bending the tab upwards and then you're actually just bending the uh, the end of each feather up so that it kind of gives a flare and then you're just going to be repeating this uh it's going to look kind of like a pineapple uh, for a little bit but you know um it it goes actually really quickly and this is actually a really quick part um and i'm actually glad that they designed it this way instead of having these tail feathers be individual one quick tip is be really careful when you're bending the tail feather because the manual will tell you to kind of bend or wrap the uh, tail feather around to give it a curve shape but it actually pricked through my fingers a lot and actually got a lot of puncturing to my fingers so be very very gentle when you're working with that uh, tail feather just because you, it is very sharp and you actually don't want to really have it kind of going through your fingers so you know this is the only place where I would say to be really cautious of uh, working with the sheet metal and as we're wrapping up this model in general, um, I really do want to say that I enjoyed this model and I encourage a lot of people who are kind of getting into the Metal Earth series or any of these sheet mod metal models that if you want to kind of get a good confidence boost, this is a great one where it gives you enough challenge but parts are actually big enough and it is a lot more workable that you know you get this really complex model and there is some effort, but it's not like some of the other uh, models like the Iron Man or the Gundam ones where it's so complicated that um, it, you know, you're going to end up breaking pieces. And it actually kind of does boost your confidence in making these sheet metals. So you can see here, I actually took some close-up uh, photos of my camera to show you all the details and the engraving and the painting that's on this sheet metal. And there is a reason why they call this a premium series. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed watching this video please subscribe to my channel or watch other videos th through my channel. Thank you.